Welcome! Welcome to Mala's Kitchen. I'm Mala coming to you from the wonderful Mala's Kitchen to yours where all of the magic happens as per the only way possible, a la Mala style. Guys, today we have an amazing recipe to get through. So in as much as I had a ton of fun chatting with you, it is time for this chick to get the show on the road. I'll see you guys back at the end. Alrighty foodies, let's get this show on the road. And what do we have in our lineup here today? Today we're gonna to be making my famous, extremely famous vanilla bean cheesecake. And it has taken me at least a good 10 years to perfect and tweak this recipe in where I actually like what I have now. I love the product I have. So let's go over the ingredients, okay? So let's see. I have three packages here of Philadelphia original cream cheese and each package obviously as you're gonna see there are eight ounces so three eight ounce packages of cream cheese surprise is I have a little bit of cottage cheese and this is round about a little over a shade over five ounces it's 5.3 ounces I believe so that's it for the cheeses I have three large eggs one tablespoon of all-purpose flour I'm also going to add one teaspoon of pure Madagascar vanilla extract. And of course, secret, 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 what do I have here? One Madagascar vanilla bean pod. I'll be using some sour cream and the sour cream, the amount is one cup, as you can see my measurement there. I'll also be using a little bit of heavy cream and I'll be using a quarter cup of heavy cream. And we have here sugar, white sugar, white granulated sugar I'll be using, which will be a cup and a third. But for creaming, I'll be starting with one cup and reserving this one third cup for later when I whip up the eggs. And that's where you're going to see the magic. Now to start with, I've had these cheeses coming to room temperature. So I'm gonna start creaming the eggs. Actually, I'm going to start creaming the sugar and the cream cheese together because I like to let that go low and slow for at least a good hour or so. So I went ahead and added the cheeses already to my mixer. As you can see, I've already added the three cream cheeses as well as the cottage cheese. And now I'm going to add the sugar. So we're going to add that granulated sugar in there go and now I'm going to get ready to put this mixture to use right here so I'm gonna get this on get my little paddle on and I'm using a paddle with these little rubber little sides here as you can see because as it mixes it's going to also scrape the sides of my pan there we go now we need to get this bad boy in. Whoops, one more time. There we go. That's precisely what we want. I'm going to put my little shield on here. Yep, there we go. And let's just get this baby adjusted to go. Yeah, there we go ready and we're going to start on our lowest seed. There we go. I'm gonna watch that baby do its little thing. And then we're gonna slowly crank up the speed on this. Let it go a little bit more. And now I'm gonna let it do its thing for like pretty much a good hour. And now for the crust. What do I have here? Of course, we're gonna make it Alamala style and it's gonna be made from scratch. So let's see, what do we have here? I've got some graham crackers and I'm using a honey graham cracker. 
and it comes with three of these packages inside of the box. So I'm going to be using two, and I believe those two are gonna give me the two cups of crushed graham crapper crumbs that I'm going to be needing. I'm also going to be using, as you can see over here, a half a cup of white sugar, half a cup measurement. I'll be using a quarter, and I'm gonna show you my measurement, a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Then I'll be using a half a teaspoon of some ground cinnamon, or rather cinnamon powder, whatever you want. One stick of unsalted butter. And this is basically around about, well, it tells you right here, it's, it's a half a cup. And it's four ounces total, right? So we'll need to melt that up. Now what I'm gonna do is start by having this Ziploc bag, a nice clean gallon bag here that I have. I have a rolling pin over here. I've got my mixing bowl ready. And I've got my nine inch springform pan. So what I'm gonna start with is inside of this Ziploc bag, I'm going to take these graham crackers and I'm going to put them in. So I'm gonna start with one stack in. Just like that. Take the other stack. And let's put these babies in as well. We're going to gently close this, trying to get rid of all of the ear bubbles that's in there. Get these out of the way. And we're going to start getting rid of some aggression. This is what we're going to do. Bang them just like this. Get them into small pieces. Of course, while you're doing this, think of somebody you don't like. That always helps. That really, really helps. So, I'm gonna keep on doing this until I get small pieces. And then, eventually, what I'm going to do, and as you can see, it's getting smaller and more crumbly. Yeah. So, that's precisely what we want. Then, we're going to start rolling it out just like this inside of the bag so our crumbs become even more fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I will see you back once I've gotten rid of my aggression. <laughs> Alright folks, so let's put this graham cracker cloth cross all together. Now I got rid of a good amount of aggression as you can see. <laughs> Look at those crumbs. No, but in all seriousness, look at those crumbs. It's all nice and it's beautifully broken up. I've got fine crust. It's still a little bit rough, but that's what you want because you want that full homemade feel to this. So now we are going to measure out two cups. And let's go for this. Is our first cup. Here's our second. Let's make sure we get a good amount of all of this in. Let's pack that in. Here we go. And we have just a little bit left. So I was right, we have exactly around about a full two cups when we initially started with the two sleeves of crackers. So now next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add our melted butter, which was the four ounces. That goes straight in. Yummy, 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 yummy. I'm going to add our kosher salt. Of course, you could have added this while everything was dry, but hey, it doesn't matter. We've got our cinnamon, and we're going to add our sugar. And of course, the sugar is a half a cup of sugar. We added, again, a half a teaspoon of our cinnamon, and we added a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. So now, we're going to get in here and mix this all together. Feel free to certainly use your hands and loosen this up, but I want to get this started first with a fork so we can loosen this all up. Now ideally when you mix this and you're mixing this crust, you want 
to make sure you don't over mix as one. And your mixture should sort of look like wet sand, kind of what we have here. So it's not fully, in other words, it's not fully dry. It's not fully wet. Kind of looks like really fresh brown sugar or like I said, wet sand with a lot of that water drained out of it. Take a look at that, this is what we have. And this is the right consistency of what you want. So the next part I'm gonna do is we're going to dump this out into this lovely spring form pan that I have here. So here's our next step. Here's our spring form pan. This goes right into the center. There we go. Get all that goodness out. We're going to press this down. Make sure it's nice and evenly distributed in here. There we go. Might even take a little bit out first, like a handful. Take about two handfuls out. We'll see what we need. Because I am not a fan of too much of a thick crust. So we're just gonna spread this out like this. Then, trick is, I'm going to use this cup. My one cup measurement. It's a nice stainless steel cup. I'm gonna use it. Press down like this. You wanna get in there and give it a nice, good press. Press it down all the way. And as you can see, you're slowly pushing up the sides of the crust. Now be gentle as you're doing this. I'm not looking for a perfect crust where the lines are going to be all the same on the sides. I don't want that because I prefer more of a scalloped somewhat edge that gives it more of that homemade feel. So we're going to keep pressing this down. I'm going to go a little bit more and I'll come back and show you what this looks like. Just a little bit more to go. Alrighty folks, as you can see, I'm just finishing up here with this crust. And this pretty much took just, I would say less than a minute, once you've started pressing it down in this pan. And as you can see, the bottom here, I pressed it down nice and firm. That's precisely what you want to do. You can see also the edges are pressed up against the side of this pan and you're not all even. You can see that some portions are high, some areas are low, and that is precisely what I am going for. Here we have it, our crust, be very gentle, is ready. Now ideally if you want, which is an option, you can bake this at 350 for about 10 to 11 minutes and then the moment you start smelling it get fragrant you take it out immediately and let it cool for me i don't like baking my crust so what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to put this into the refrigerator and it's going to stay there for at least a good hour an hour to two hours before i'm ready to pour my cheesecake batter into it because I like a nice, soft, tender crust. And I find when you bake it, even though it holds together, it's a little bit crispy, and that's not exactly what I'm looking for in my cheesecake. The extra is the two hands full that I've pulled out here, which is probably, hmm, I would say loosely packed, maybe three quarters of a cup. I'm going to dump this into a smaller spring form pan. And if I have any leftovers, I'll pour the batter into there, or actually now I'm not talking, I think maybe I'll just do it into a little, uh, little paper cups and we'll see what happens. This here that I'm using is a nine inch spring form pan. And this has been my favorite over the years. So for cheesecakes, this is absolutely perfect. Now of course, as you notice, I did not put butter on the bottom of this pan. I didn't put any sprays, none of that, because this crust already has butter in it. So there'll be no problem in loosening the cheesecake when it's time to serve it, because I serve it right into this. 
time to refrigerate. Alrighty, so let's get ready to add some more ingredients to this here cheesecake. Let's see, what do we have? I have here a quarter cup, just like this, a quarter cup of heavy cream that I'm going to drizzle in. Here we go, slowly drizzle that in. And of course, if you notice, I've got the beater on very low at this point because I do not want spills. There we go, so we'll get the creams in. Next, we're going to do is our one cup of sour cream. So let's get this sour cream in. my one tablespoon, as you can see, of all-purpose flour. This I'm simply going to drizzle in, just like this. There we go. And let that go for a little. Next up is my one teaspoon of pure Madagascar vanilla bean extract. So let's do that. There we go. That baby in nice and slow. Perfection. That's precisely what we want. The next thing we're going to add into this would be our vanilla bean pod. Okay, so I have my vanilla bean pod here. Here we go. So all nice and straightened. There we go. I'm gonna do it like that. Hold it out nice and straight, just like that. And I'm gonna take my beautiful knife. And I'm going to start right at the top and slowly but surely slip this down right to the middle, right down that middle. There we go. Now we're going to peel this open. Okay, if that doesn't work, we want to slit it just a little bit more, add a little bit more pressure. There we go. Make sure you go all the way through. I was probably a little too light that first try. Here we go. Oh, look at that goodness in there. How beautiful is that, right? Yep. That is where the money is. So we want to open up this beautiful pod, just like this. Expose all of those beautiful vanilla bean seeds. And this is the trick that we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take this beautiful knife, open this up just like this, and start from the very top. Let's see if we can get you in for a nice tight shot on that. Yep. Start at the very top like this, and scrape her way all the way down. Now look at that sure to get all of that goodness. This is the stuff. This is now going to go straight into our cheesecake. Here's our vanilla bean. Take a look at that. It looks gorgeous. It smells amazing. And we're simply going to scoop that right into the cheesecake just like so. And that is going to be amazing. We're just going to start a slow whisk on that. I'll show you what that looks like. Let's go in for a nice little look. And there you can see those tiny little spots. Sorry, you can see those little tiny black spots inside of the cheese. That's that beautiful vanilla, baby. Oh, yeah. That's what we want. Vanilla, 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 baby. Guess what I'm going to do with this beautiful vanilla bean pot that's left over? No, I'm not going to throw it out. I'm going to bend it over like this, exposing the inside of it, where I scrape that all of those that beautiful vanilla bean. And I have a jar here of sugar. I'm going to make myself some homemade vanilla sugar. 
I'm going to nestle this down just like this. Scoop some of that sugar over it. Get that nice and buried in there. Yep, use your hands because you want this nice and all the way down hidden. It's covered with sugar. There we go. Oh, and it does not want to get hidden. Look at that. There we go, finally. Okay, so we do that. Put a lid on it. Cover it up like so. And guess what? After a while, you're going to have your very own vanilla bean sugar, and it's going to taste amazing. You can use this stuff for another cheesecake. You can use this to sweeten your beautiful coffee. You can use this even for those beautiful pancakes, those homemade pancakes that I have on my channel. Alrighty, so our cheesecakes mixture is nice and beautiful. And if you can see all those little tiny black specks that you see, yeah, that's the vanilla bean pod that we put in there. Those are those beautiful, scrumptious, delicious, decadent, flavorful vanilla bean seeds. This is gonna be one amazing cheesecake. Now here, I've got some eggs. Now remember we had two, actually three whole eggs that we brought out to room temperature. And this is what I've done, I've separated them. So I've got the whites in this stainless bowl and I've got here the yolks in this white bowl. I also went ahead and added an extra yolk. So we have four yolks in this bowl and we have three egg whites in the other bowl. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get started on whisking this up. So I'm going to be using, of course, my little trusty Food Network little whisker here, my little hand mixer. And of course, Food Network, if you're listening, give a girl some shout out. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start here on the lowest setting. So let's start here at E1. Gonna start the lowest and let's start with that. As this is going, that one third of a cup of sugar that I saved from earlier, I'm going to slowly drizzle in about half of that here. Save the other half for the egg whites. So we're gonna get this to a ribbon line. All right, so this is what our egg yolks look like right now. This is the consistency I like. It's nice and it's light. It's got that beautiful golden ribbon texture to it. Most of our sugar is all melted up and I'm simply going to drizzle it in to this cheesecake batter. There we go. Get all of that goodness in. Make sure to scrape down the sides of your bowl. This is very important. You want all of the ingredients in. There we go. Beautiful egg yolks. Now, of course, if you wanted to keep this, you know, for a vegetarian, I guess, could eat it. You would want to mix this portion so you would not be adding any eggs whatsoever. But what I would tell you is to probably whip up some Cool Whip, actually not, well you could use Cool Whip, but I would tell you whip up some heavy cream and make your own whipped cream and slowly fold that in so that you get that volume. So our eggs are in, I'm gonna put this on a low. Slowly start getting that incorporated. And we're gonna get this mixed up. Once this is done, and this is pretty much incorporated, I'm going to go ahead and start on the egg whites. Now, of course, with the egg whites, I've saved already part of that sugar. Got the egg whites in a stainless bowl. And I went ahead and I rinsed off my mixer because you do not want any kind of transference of that yolk into your egg whites. Now time to do these egg whites. And I'm going to start by getting uh, starting on the lowest setting. There we go. For the egg whites. And I'm going to slowly drizzle in all that sugar. There we go. Look how quickly the texture of our egg whites are changing. 
ready so our egg whites are done and this is pretty much where we want it where we pretty much have see how firm it is we call that pretty much a stiff peak yep and we're going to now fold this into our cheesecake let's just get this ready so it's time to fold these beautiful egg whites in going to scoop them out and we try to be gentle with them because we want to simply fold it into the cheesecake at this point because this add all of that lightness and air to our cheesecake which we do not want to lose Our cheesecake batter looks amazing how beautiful and light I took out at this point our chilled crust and I'm going to fill that just about half away or so actually go a little bit more because I went ahead and with that extra crust that I made I kept out I decided to go with a smaller pan going to put that baby in here, fill it up to about three quarters, or let's see how far we go with that. Yeah, I think that looks good. And we're going to finish the rest of this batter into this much larger pan. And this is going to be around about three quarters of the way. There we go. Now our next step here, of course we want to make sure we get all of this beautiful batter out, is I'm going to be cooking this with a hot water bath. So as you can see, all these several pans that I have here. So the first pan is normally what you could do is you could wrap this original pan on the outside with a piece of foil. I've opted to not do that because I really want to make sure that I have no chances of any water leaking on the inside so i dropped it inside of a separate baking pan and then that inside of a much larger baking pan so inside of this larger baking pan i'm going to add hot water halfway up to the sides of the outside of that baking pan of the outer one the same thing i'm going to do for the smaller cheesecake as you can see i dropped it into a smaller baking pan and then that smaller baking pan into another outer one. I'll be filling this up with hot water halfway up the sides. I've got my oven preheating at 350 right now. So one is going to go in the top, one's going to go in the bottom. So let's get started here. Get my glove. Be 
ready for the oven. Alrighty guys, so I shut off the oven at the 55 minute mark because I thought this was getting cooked just about enough. And it's been cooling, I cracked the oven for about two inches and this has been cooling for about an hour now. I'm about to take this out of the oven and let it cool on a cooling rack on the outside inside of the kitchen. Now let's take a look at the second little baby. Here is our little baby cheesecake. I stopped this, of course, also at the 55 minute mark. Cracked the oven open at about two inches to let cool. And now I'm going to take this out and let it come to complete room temperature on the outside on the kitchen countertop. Time to let these babies cool off even more to room temperature. Okay, going in with a super hot knife. And this is what cheesecake perfection so, looks like. Once again, this is Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours. Don't forget to look us up on Facebook, Instagram, of course on YouTube. And give us a like, a follow, a share, a subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And be sure to check out all of the other cool recipes we have, okay? Thank you. Have a great one. Love you guys.